Welcome to my review of Razian EX for the Switch. And the footage shown here is from my playthrough of Maniac, which I did a tutorial on, which I will I'll link the um, I'll post the link in the description, so if you want to check that out. It wasn't a super refined playthrough, but I did complete all the bosses with no damage, so I thought that would be a good showcase for the um, for the tutorial. But yeah, I wanted to review this because I thought this was a uh, a fucking great game. So that's definitely my thoughts on the game. I was very impressed with it. Now it is a short game, about 22 minutes, but I think that kind of works in its favor for this type of game. You know, especially if you're looking to do challenge runs like a uh, a one cc run is perfect for this kind of game. You know, it's not too long where it overstays its welcome, but you know it's intense in that amount of time, especially if you're playing on Maniac and trying to do a one cc. You know, um, it's going to be plenty intense for most players. The boss fights are a lot of fun. Some of them can be quite tough if you're trying not to die on them. But none of them are really super hard like some shooters can be. So they, they can be on the easier side if you're used to these kind of shooters. But there's still some tough patterns. In this game, you have a very tiny hitbox. Even though your ship is big, there's only a small portion of your ship that can actually take damage. There's a button you can hold that gives you rapid fire, but it also slows your ship down. So if you want to use that for tighter maneuvering, um, in my clearing of Maniac mode, I never actually use that feature. I, I don't really like it, but then again, I haven't gone for a 1cc yet, so that may change. There's also, um, you know, just your regular shot. If you hold down your regular shot button, um, you know, you'll... I think in this game, if I remember right, you have to tap for... For rapid fire, if I remember correctly, or what it is actually, no, you know what I think it is. I think you have a separate button for your for your power shot. So if you hold down just the regular fire button, you'll fire rapidly. And if you and you know when your when your meter's full at the very bottom, you see that meter at the bottom that fills up. Whenever that fills up, you get a super shot. And you can also fill it up quicker by gaining cubes that enemies drop when you kill them. So that's another way to get it up faster. Like you see those cubes I got powered up my meter faster. But it keeps regenerating. It just takes a little while. Um, on Novice, it seems to regenerate super fast. Um, at least that's what it seemed like. Now, the difference between Normal and Maniac difficulty really wasn't massive. I mean, Normal gets pretty dense as is. But it's not too bad to beat on any of the difficulties, at least i found, because you, um, you, get, you can earn up to 10 continues the more you play. As you play and die and lose, eventually you'll have 10 continues. And it doesn't take too long to get. I beat normal in about three hours and six minutes. And then Maniac only took me an additional hour and a half. But I also had all ten of the continues unlocked by that point anyway. So, you know, that made things easier. The boss design is fucking... I mean, the, the, the art style is fucking awesome. Some of the best for this kind of game. It's, it's really impressive. Especially considering this was released on the Neo Geo, I think, in 2014 maybe. But... Um, you know, I didn't know about this game, but this is a Switch version, and I believe it is on uh, maybe just PC and Switch. I don't think it had many ports because usually, um, well, you know, it might be on it might be on one of the other consoles. I'd have to look it up, but it's easy enough to check that. The game was twenty dollars on the uh, the Nintendo Shop, which I thought was well worth it. Even though I, I probably could get the Neo Geo ROM, but I actually don't have it, so. Uh, this was a good way for me to play it. Plus, I like the idea that I can unlock more continues, which was a good way to practice. Now, of course, if I was playing on emulation like I play a lot of these games, I could have used Safe State to practice and all that, but I, don't even, I couldn't even find this ROM. So, um, this was a cool way to get access to the game. So, basically, the way the game works is, obviously, you dodge all the bullets and projectiles like you would with any of these horizontal shooters. And whenever you continue, you start right where you died or whenever you lose a life. The thing is that, you know, eventually you may run out of continues if you don't have enough earned, you know, and if you die too much. But like I said, once you get 10 continues, you have about 30 lives to beat the game, which is not, you know, not asking too much. So the difficulty is kind of moderate. But Maniac is still a challenge even with the 10 continues. It still presents a little bit of a challenge. I didn't just, you know, beat it immediately or anything. I still had to make multiple attempts on Maniac after beating Normal to, to complete it. As usual, it's really about, you know, those small little micro movements and trying to, you know, really get the patterns down to where you can move as little as possible to dodge things. You know, that's usually when you're really in the zone is when you're making these small movements to dodge everything that's going on. And that, of course, is just pattern, you know, recognition and, and just playing a lot and, and memorizing the best, you know, the best ways to go about each boss. 
A great feature of this game is the boss practice mode and the level practice mode. So once you've unlocked this stage by completing it, you can always go back in a separate menu instead of starting the game normally, and you can do boss practice or stage practice, which is always an awesome feature. You know, more games should have that, for sure. Now, there are no saves or anything like that, but like I said, it's a 22-minute game, so that's, that's not a big deal. And um, it's the kind of game where you just play it, and as you die, you'll earn more and more continues, which, of course, that'll save. It will save your, your menu progress as you've logged in a certain amount of time is probably how it unlocks the um, the extra continues, I'm guessing. You know, after, after about three hours, I had them all unlocked, so it wasn't too bad. And you're going to be using that three hours to learn the game anyway in practice, so it's, it's not going to be a waste of time, you know. And as you get farther into the game, it really ramps up at a nice pace. Like, it gets denser and denser with the bullets and patterns and everything as you get farther in. So it has a nice learning curve to it, which is really well balanced. The soundtrack is some of the best I've heard in this kind of game. It has an awesome fucking soundtrack. Uh, I was just listening to some of the soundtrack separate from the game on YouTube, you know. And I don't, I'm not usually that fucking, um, you know, into soundtracks and shit. There's very few that uh, in, in games that resonate with me, you know. There's some real classic shit out there. I mean, like going back to the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, there's some amazing tracks. But you know, most most games don't really do it for me, but this game has an awesome fucking soundtrack. It's something you don't really get in modern games anymore at all. It's very rare. So that's really cool. And as far as, you know, I don't really have any issues with the game. I mean, um, you know, I, I can't think of any real issues I had with the game. I thought it was just really well done. But, um, yeah, just, I mean, just a great game all around. You know, I thought the game was really well done. But you can see how you got to learn the patterns, and it's just really slight movements once you get it down. Now, this wasn't a perfect run by any means, but you can you can see the general idea. And I should explain a little bit about how the power-up system works, because this game didn't have a manual, and even after I and it wasn't until I actually did a no damage run on the final boss that I learned how the game worked, which is kind of uh, a little bit late. I had already cleared maniac mode, and then I was doing a, a final boss run in the boss practice mode, and the reason I was doing that is I wanted to do a no damage run for my tutorial that I was going to make, because I spliced the footage of my best boss attempts into the tutorial. You know, since that's a demonstration version, it's not meant to be a, uh, a perfect playthrough or anything like that. But, um, yeah, and when I did that, it took me an additional 13 minutes to do that, which wasn't too long, but in doing that, I, I realized that your ship is way more powerful if you don't fire your power shots. So there's a really cool risk-reward mechanic built into the game that I didn't even know about. So, as you see, when that meter fills at the bottom, that power shot meter, when it's full, your ship is fully powered up. There are no power-ups that you collect to power up your shots, like in other shooters. So, when that meter fills, your shot is going to have three. It's going to expand to three shots at once, and it's way more powerful than the single shot you have when your bar's not fully charged. So the idea is, when you're fighting a boss especially... You don't want to fire your power shot. You want to use that powered up triple shot when the bar is full because that's going to do the most damage to the boss. So whenever you blow your load and fire your power shot out, it's kind of a fuck up because it's going to make your shot weaker for a while. So the best way to use it that i found is, is to use it only in an emergency when you're about to get cornered by a shot and die. Or if you really need to clear a path to move through some debris, you know, if you're in a bad spot. Like that, there I should have used it. But you know what I mean? But like for since situations like that, but aside from that, the idea is to try to keep your, your fully powered up shot as long as you can. Now, during the stages, unless you're going for points, it's, it's not going to matter. You just want to survive so you know you can fire your power shots to get through because it charges up pretty quick. You get a lot of cubes to power it up faster. So it's pretty easy to keep it going. There's a really nice rhythm to the stages where you're constantly trying to dodge, but you're trying to balance it with getting those power shots in time to clear a path. And you just keep trying to, you know... Dodge, get the power shot, clear a path, and you just keep you know progressing like that. It's a constant pacing like that, and it's very cool. The power shot doesn't really do a ton of damage to the bosses, but it will get you out of bad situations. So that's the main mechanic of the game. You want to keep that powered up shot. But yeah, I thought this was a great game. You know, I'd give it an eight point five out of ten. I thought it was great. I don't like I said, don't really have any issues with it. If I wanted to think of complaints, maybe it could be longer. But like I said, it's kind of a double edged sword because. You know, a lot of these games, the fun of them sometimes is doing challenge runs like 1cc. And sometimes a shorter game is kind of a benefit to that. Now, it does recycle some bosses on the last uh, stage. You know, there's, some, there's a boss rush with re recycled bosses that are reused. But 
Um, they have new patterns and new moves and shit like that. And to me, that wasn't like I didn't I didn't see that as a repetitive or a bad thing. I thought it was well done. So I, I can't really shit on the game for that. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.